Hey there everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the ProSnap Deluxe Camera for Fallout 76, where you can find it, how to use it, and virtually everything else you want to know about the ProSnap Deluxe Camera. And real quick, I'm your Naked Vault Dweller, I'm a content creator for Fallout 76 and other Bethesda titles, and I haven't done a walkthrough like this in some time, so make sure you watch it all the way through and let me know if I missed anything down in the comments section. Alright, so you're looking for the exact location of where you can find the ProSnap Deluxe Camera. Most people I asked been playing the game for a while will tell you that the ProSnap Deluxe camera is actually pretty easy to find. And in some ways I actually agree with them, but it's still kind of convoluted if you don't know exactly where to go to. And as of late, Bethesda has been requiring us to take pictures for our daily and weekly challenges for aliens and other animals. So rounding up the ProSnap Deluxe camera is definitely something that you want to add to your inventory. And check out what's required to complete the Order of the Tadpole, which is a quest inside of Fallout 76 courtesy of Wild Appalachia. You have to take pictures of seven 76 different creatures. But just a little side note here, those creatures don't have to be alive when you take their picture. Just, you know, take their picture. And we'll explain that a little bit later. Okay, so where do we start first, Naked? Well, I'm glad you asked that. You're going to want to open up the Atomic Shop and scroll down to where it says Camp. And in the Camp items, you're going to want to find the Personal Terminal, which should be free. And as you can see on my Atomic Shop, my Personal Terminal has already been taken, but I was unaware that there was an option inside of this that allowed us to, you know, find the camera. Once you've gotten your free Personal Terminal, go ahead and open up your Camp menu, or if you're not already there, go and travel to your Camp, and then you're going to want to place your Personal Terminal inside your Camp. Now, this doesn't have to be super perfect, all you have to do is just place it once and then go in there and access the menus and then you can get rid of it if you want to. In fact, I've probably never used mine. Okay, great. We got a personal terminal place. Let's go ahead and access it and go to automated alerts. The next selection will contain suspicious person, which I thought was pretty interesting considering that the suspicious person is either male or female and they're dead. But I digress, this is the option you want to choose. The next screen will tell you something about some communists and being shooed away. Don't mind any of that. Just click the option to go ahead and download coordinates for suspicious person. Now real quick, there's 13 different locations that the camera can be located on. There's always one on every server. So the place that it tells you to go to on this server is definitely going to be there. So you're going to want to follow that. At this point, you're going to want to go ahead and go into your pit boy, go to data, go to side quests, go down to miscellaneous. And in there, you're going to find the actual quest that you'll need to take to go to the location. Select that and tell it to show on map, then travel to it. In this scenario, it's actually going to be Watoga. I'm going to take you to all 13 of the places here. So stick with me as we go through them. And just remember, we're only trying to collect one broken ProSnap Deluxe camera. This next part is just to show you the different locations it's located in. We're going to go ahead and zoom in here on the map. In fact, let's do that to all of them. And then when you get to Watoga, the body that you're looking for is going to actually be located in front of the Welcome to Watoga sign. The next place we're going to go to is the Beckley Mine Exhibit located in the Ash Heap. When you arrive at the Beckley Mine exhibit, you're going to want to work your way into the parking lot where you'll find the dead body perched up against a blue car. Next, let's look over here at Toxic Valley for Wavy Willard's Water Park. When you get to Wavy Willard's, you're not going to have to go very far into the park to find the dead body. Just check out this car in the middle of the parking lot. Now let's head on over to the forest where we're going to go to the Miner's Monument. And just a note, not that it really matters, this is my least favorite place to find the body. But you will find it over here next to the monument on the stairs. Next up, we're going to go to Landview Lighthouse. It's also located in the forest. When you arrive, you can actually see whether or not there's a body atop of the lighthouse just by, you know, looking up there. Or if, you know, you had a camera, you could, you know, zoom into it. Anyway, if this is the place to go, you're going to work your way all the way to the top of the lot house. And then when you get outside, just work your way to the right and you'll find the body laying there. And now it's time to go to the Palace of the Winding Path in the Savage Divide. If you fast traveled to the Palace of the Winding Path, this location is actually located behind you in the parking lot. So you kind of have to you know, double back a little bit. But whenever you get there, you'll see the Palace of the Winding Path in the distance. And back on over here in the forest, we're going to go to Tyler County Fairgrounds. The location of this suspicious person is further into the park. Whenever you get there, head east to get to the rock wall and start working your way over to where there's going to be kind of a stage area. The dead body is going to be sitting or kind of lying in a chair. And now let's go ahead and head on over to the White Springs Resort. When you arrive, you'll find a red car parked right in front of the White Springs Resort. And on top of the red car, you're going to find a suspicious person dead body. Next, we're going to go ahead and pop on over to Colonel Kelly Monument 
Just kidding, it's Colonel Kelly Monument. Just making sure you guys are paying attention. When you get here, you're gonna to wanna to go all the way to the top where the monument is located. There you will find on a bench our suspicious dead person. Now let's pop on over to the giant teapot located in the forest. Everybody loves a giant teapot. When you get to the giant teapot, you're gonna to want to head over to the picnic tables. And I'm starting to see a pattern here for all these suspicious people. They're all dead and they're all laying on something. And since we're already down this way, let's move over to Point Pleasant where it seems like I can't get that location exactly in the middle of the screen. When you get to Point Pleasant, you can either, you know, kill everything in town and work your way to the Mothman Monument or you could sneak your way there. But in either case, the suspicious person is lying in the middle of town next to the monument right here. Next, we're going to move on over to Bolton Greens where we're going to find that miniature golf course and perhaps a suspicious dead person, you know, somewhere. You're going to want to work your way to the front of the house, dodging bullets by the scorch nearby, and there you'll find in a fountain our dead suspicious person. And the last location that these suspicious dead bodies can be found is going to be located at Philippi Battlefield Cemetery. When we arrive, we're just going to go barely into the cemetery where we'll find our suspicious person. And just remember folks, if you access your personal terminal and find the suspicious person that's on your server, you can collect the ProSnap camera without having to do a bunch of server hops. Okay, so now we have our camera, what do we do next? Well, I'm glad you asked that because next you're going to want to go to a Tinker's Workbench. I chose the one in Foundation just because, you know, I don't know, I'm lazy and I need a sandwich. In the list, you're going to scroll down to where it says camera. And from there, scroll down to where it says the ProSnap Deluxe Camera. And as you can see here, the primary ingredient is the broken ProSnap Deluxe Camera, which we've picked up. I have 29, I'd give you one, but I'm stingy. Go ahead and proceed with making the camera. And while you're doing that, you're also going to want to make some film. Now the film is super light, so make you, you know, 30 or 60 of them or a bazillion. Go nuts. Once you've made the camera, you go into your inventory, you'll see that you cannot drop this item for someone else. It's uh, bound to your character and your character alone. So congratulations, you have your first ProSnap Deluxe camera. Okay, so let's talk about mods. Where do I go to get some mods? Well, I'm glad you asked that too, because you can actually get your starter mods in Sutton. While in Sutton, you're gonna want to go ahead and travel to the overseer's house, go inside like you own it, and then go downstairs where you'll find a Mr. Handy by the name of Davenport. If you speak to Davenport, he'll give you a quest that will require your Pro Snap Deluxe camera where you'll go and take pictures of stuff and then you'll return to him, turn the quest in, and then at times he will give you plans for like the 105 millimeter lens or the 200 millimeter lens. You can also get another lens mod for the Pro Snap Deluxe camera by visiting Camp Adams or Camp Lewis, I'm just going to show you guys Camp Adams, and going up to the Possum Badge vending machine. In the vending machine, if you scroll down, you'll find the ProSnap night vision lens for five Possum Badges. There's also a number of skins that you can get off the Atomic Shop as well as off scoreboards whenever they come around. Lastly, you can equip your ProSnap Deluxe camera like a gun, and if you look through the viewfinder at particular items or locations, it will actually tell you in the top right hand corner what you're looking at. This way, it takes all the guesswork out of whether you're you're taking the right picture or not of whatever you're supposed to be taking a picture of, especially if you're required to take specific pictures of certain items or certain locations. Okay, wow, so this has actually turned into a longer walkthrough than I anticipated it to. I really hope that I've been thorough enough. I encourage anybody to leave a comment down below letting me know if there's anything that I left out or that I've obviously missed. And if you enjoyed watching this walkthrough, this is the kind of stuff that I like to do. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do that. Give the video a thumbs up because that really does help us out a lot. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. I'm hoping to to see you guys soon in Appalachia. You guys take care.